Well, good morning and welcome to Now Then Alliance Church. If I haven't met you before, my name is Nate Kemper. I'm the lead pastor here and love that we gather each week to celebrate Jesus together. Uh, we've been doing that in some unique ways. In the last few weeks, we've started a series called Ancient and Sacred, where we've been looking at a number of elements from Old Testament Jewish services and practices at synagogues, as well as the early church in the first and second century, and then uh, seeing some of the unique ways they made uh, focuses on God, parts of their services together, and implementing them in ours. And so today you'll experience some of those things. We'll begin in just a moment by reciting a song of ascent together to set our minds and hearts and spirits towards the God we're going to worship. We'll have a time of connecting with each other. They would have called that the passing of the peace, where we uh, invite each other into the spiritual family or make restoration in any relationships we need to before entering deeper worship. Times of reading scripture and letting it speak on its own, even without further exposition, just the value of God's word, and then some dedicated time of prayer together as well, all while also having Tim, Tim and Penny Iverson here with us from Taiwan to talk with us about how God is at work around the world and what it looks like for us to partner with that. And so I'm excited about the morning as we get ready to worship together. As we're getting ready to do that, I'd love if you'd stand with me as we recite Psalm 121 together. Let's speak these out words out as a, as a way to root ourselves in who God is and what he does for us. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore.
Jesus' most famous sermon, uh, he says these words. We looked at them last week together. He says, therefore, if you're offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First, go and be reconciled to them and then come and offer your gift. Jesus' hope is that before we would present our offerings to God, which we'll do here in a moment, that we would make sure we're reconciled with the community of believers we do life with. In the ancient world, then, that turned into a practice of having a time in the middle of their services where they would connect with each other as part of the spiritual family before entering into deeper worship together. It wasn't simply a time for small talk and meeting and greeting, though in our context it sometimes ends up playing out that way. It was a time to bless each other, encourage each other, and then, as Jesus says, if you remember that there's a brother or sister who holds something against you, to offer peace to them, maybe to confess with them or pray with them. And so our hope is to practice like they did for the next four weeks, a period of that time. And so in the next couple of moments, it'll just be about two or three minutes worth of time. I'd love for you to connect with someone, to bless them, to encourage them, to invite them into deeper spiritual worship with you. Maybe that's through reciting some scripture over them or just encouraging them and how God loves them or praying with them. Or maybe there is somebody that you need to reconcile with and you go and offer peace to them. And if you're here and you don't know anybody to connect with or don't feel comfortable connecting with somebody that's around you that you may have not met before, I'd invite any of you to come and connect with me as well. I'll be up in the front and that can create a group if there's people that prefer to connect that way. And so I'd encourage you for the next couple of minutes to spend some time with the people that you know or the people that are near you, uh, encouraging them, blessing them, praying for them uh, this morning before we continue in worship together. I'm going to start gathering us back together. As wonderful as it is for us to continue connecting with each other, and I encourage that to continue happening as the service closes a little later, uh, we're here to connect well with God. As a church, as a church, we exist to equip people to find life and faith in Christ and believe we do that best as we connect with each other, but also as we grow in our relationship with God and encourage others to do the same. And participate in what God is doing in our lives and in the world around us. And we've got a few different ways for that to happen. We've talked about one of them already in just a few moments. Some of you may choose to give back to God some of what he's blessed you with. But before that, a couple of opportunities to participate in connection with each other and in what God's doing. Uh, we've got a senior in high school that attends our church, Matthew Burquest, and part of his uh, senior classes include a project he's supposed to do to partner with an organization. Uh, to bless them and to impact the world. And so he's chosen to partner with Compassion Church and to uh, get 
um, donations to go towards those experiencing homelessness. And we're excited about helping see that happen as well. And so he's put some donation boxes in the lobby here and by door B and in the youth room. And we'll be connecting those kinds of supplies uh, through next Sunday. And so I'd encourage you to think through what some of those supplies are. If you're looking for a list of those, we've got it posted on our Facebook page. He's shot a video in uh, talking a little more about the project he's doing and what it looks like for you to partner with him in that. And so you can go to our Facebook page and find that. You can see a video straight from him about that, but we'd love to have you participate that. There's also posters by those boxes. So if you look in the lobby, it can show you some of the things that you can bring in to donate for next week as well. And then I'd encourage you to look in your bulletin. You'll see that we've got a hymn sing coming up on October 30th. That's on a Sunday night at 6.30, a great time to get together in worship um, and to join with others through singing hymns, sharing testimonies, praying together. So mark your calendars for that October 30th at 6.30 p.m. Uh, here in the sanctuary. We'd love to have you join us for that. It also lets you know in the bulletin how you can participate in our Thanksgiving ministry just by giving us names of people who may be able to use a blessing around that time of year. We love to plan that for them and get Cub Goop food gift cards. So those who maybe don't have the funds and means to uh, to uh, celebrate Thanksgiving the way we're accustomed to in our culture, we'll have that as an opportunity that we can bless them with. You can get those names to Pastor Bruce um, via email. That's all the role you need. You can also say if you'd be willing to take those gifts to them once we have them. But all that we um, need from you is names, though you can participate in other ways in that as well. And then I want to remind you that today after the second service, we've got a, a Taiwan-themed lunch that we'd love to have you at. Tim and Penny will be there with us, and you'll get to hear uh, some more unique stories or be able to connect with them in some more unique ways about what God's work in Taiwan looks like. And I'd love to invite you towards that with a, an understanding of something that you're hearing for for the first time today. Two and a half years ago, we were the last team that we know of uh, to be able to visit our partners in Taiwan. We had a missions trip that was serving with the Odells in Taipei as COVID was beginning to spread in that area of the world, a little bit before it came here. And then we were the last team they had when, and then everything had to shut down for COVID. And our hope is to be the first team they have after that as well. And so we have a trip uh, tentatively planned right now for January 25th to February 5th of 2023. So just like three to four months from now where uh, restrictions have been easing enough there at what the quarantine process has looked like for them that we're expected to be able to serve there at the end of January and beginning of February. We'd love to have you begin praying and thinking about joining us for that trip. You'll hear more about informational meetings as they come up, but also a great reason to come to the lunch this afternoon and hear more about what God's work in Taiwan is like because I've been there a couple of times on the trips that we've gone and have enjoyed both of them and would love uh, to see many others get to have those experiences as well. Well, today we're going to receive our offering here in just a few moments. We take time to worship God by giving back to him some of what he's blessed us with. And one of the things we talked about last week when we were looking at ancient offerings was that we recognize throughout all of scripture, uh, some of the offerings in scripture are commanded, they're compulsory, but most of the offerings in scripture were voluntary. People chose to do them because God was moving in their hearts. And so we said the role of church leadership is just to make you aware and so last week we talked some about where our church budget was at and what some of those things were like. Today I want to talk just a little bit about what our giving towards work around the world and missions looks like. Year to date so far, this year towards the Great Commission Fund, that's a fund that our denomination takes collectively to use towards the spreading of the gospel around the world. Uh, we've given $37,000 to the Great Commission Fund so far this year. The loudest applause so far coming from some of the people who get to receive and benefit from that. Uh, we believe on top of that because uh, there are people that then give to individual uh, missionary partners that we have as well that were likely well above that in our total giving towards missions, uh, though I didn't uh, look up all of those numbers. They have to come from the national office. We don't have them always just with our internal bookkeeping on that side of things. The goal from a denominational perspective, their hope is that we would give, uh, that each person would give 1% of their income. So they would 
say if the standard of talking about money in churches is that 10% would go to the church, that you give a penny of every dollar on top of that to needs around the world. And so their hope from nationally is that roughly 10% of our annual budget would be given towards missions. Last year we gave 13% uh, towards work around the world. We have always hovered well around or above that 10%, and that's our hope this year. Right now, to just Great Commission Fund giving, we'd be at 8%, though like I said, with other giving, we think we're above and beyond that as well. But as you think about what that looks like, we take time particularly around our missions conference every year to talk about what a faith promise towards giving towards the work around the world was is like and so in your bulletin you'll have this faith promise card and that's not a card that our church uses to do budgeting it's not a card even that the national office uses to do budgeting it's a card that we use to remind ourselves of the important process and role that we can play in impacting the whole world with the gospel and that we want to do what God's word says. We want to pray and think through how he may move our hearts so that we can then voluntarily give, do that gladly, do that sacrificially, and do that in abundance and in proportion to our means and abilities to do so. And so this talks a little bit about what that looks like, and we'd love for you to pray and consider what a faith promise from you would look like. If you've done that before coming today, you can fill it out and putting in the offering plate as it goes by, but uh, there isn't a timeline on that of today. So many people will hear about the work around the world today and may feel God beginning to move in their hearts and then have conversations as a family throughout the week and bring that back next week and place it in the offering. That's a way for us to be able to celebrate how God is moving and for us to be able to uh, understand um, what the role is of the way we can encourage our participation in needs around the world. And so I want to just remind you of that. It is the option both on how you want to make give to the Great Commission Fund or if you want to support some of our workers personally. Um, the, they've updated the cards to be able to do both of those things. And so I'd encourage you to pray about and think about that throughout the week. Uh, as we then normally take our offering, there's opportunity for anybody to give as an act of worship. If you're new or visiting here, we don't want you to feel any pressure or obligation to give. So if you'd like to join us in worshiping God in this way, you can do so through the offering baskets as they're passed, or there's a box out in the lobby or digitally at nowthenalliance.org. Anybody can give that way as well. We want to pray for, foremost for how God would use the gifts that we receive on his behalf. Would you join us in that prayer? God, we are thankful for all that you've blessed us with, most importantly, the gift of life that you extended to us through Christ. And yet we recognize many other blessings. And so as we take time now to give some of them back to you, we pray that they would be pleasing and acceptable to you as an act of worship, and that you would use these gifts to spread your love and to grow your kingdom in a world that could desperately use more of it. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. While they come to receive those gifts, I'm going to continue with some scripture reading from both the Old and New Testament. We'll begin with Genesis chapter 11, verses 31 through chapter 12, verse 3. It says this, Terah took his son Abram, his grandson Lot of Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, the wife of his son Abram, and together they set out from Ur of the Chaldeans to go to Canaan. When they came to Haran, they settled there. Terah lived 205 years, and he died in Haran. The Lord said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, your father's household, to the land I will show you. Here's what he says to him. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. And then from the New Testament, Acts chapter 1, starting in verse 3 through verse 9, it says this, after his, talking about Jesus, after his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around them and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, 
It is not for you to know the times or the dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. I'm going to continue to worship together the God who says he will bless us so that we can bless the nations and the God who says that he will give us the power to be his witnesses to the ends of the earth. If you're able, would you stand with me while we continue that worship?
the last pattern that we've seen from the ancient church so far is that when they would pray together, it was assumed that everybody was praying, not just that they would agree in prayer with the one who had prayed from the front, but that prayer would be something we would participate in together. And so we've looked at the Lord's Prayer, and then the last couple of weeks have guided some of our prayer time, uh, at all of our prayer time, on the categories as Jesus breaks them down. We'll do that again today. I'll give you instruction mostly about prayers around the world and how we impact the work God is doing in other places. Jesus begins this way, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. For the next 30 seconds or so, I'd love for you to be praying about a place in the world, not, not in our culture, but maybe somewhere else around the world, where God's name might not be as hallowed or maybe not as heard. And pray for how God's name would be hallowed there. Would you spend 30 seconds or so praying for places in the world and around the world that you'd love to see God's name hallowed? Jesus continues, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Maybe you know particular workers or people around the world who are aiming to bring the kingdom of God into a place that doesn't see it represented very often. Would you pray for people around the world or for the persecuted church that they would see the kingdom come and God's will be done where they are as it's done in heaven. Let's spend about 30 seconds praying for that. Jesus continues, give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. Many of us don't struggle with where daily bread comes from, but many around the world do. We recognize that we both want them to have the most important bread, the bread of life from Jesus Christ, but also that it's hard for them to be discipled well when their bellies are crying out for food. So could we pray? in the next 30 seconds for people around the world to have the daily bread that they need, both physically and spiritually. Matthew chapter 6 version, Jesus ends, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. I'd love for us to pray for ourselves, not to be tempted to only think about the life we live and the experiences we have day to day, but that we would be reminded of an awareness of the unseen things for us around the world, the needs around the world, that we wouldn't forget the things we don't see. Would you pray that God would keep your heart and spirit and eyes open to needs around the world. Father, we long to do your will and to be your partners as you've allowed us and asked us to be. 
Help us to do that, not just in the daily things we encounter that are present in front of us, but in the things that you call us to in our Judeas and Samarias and ultimately to the ends of the earth. We know that only happens because of the spirit you've placed inside of us and the work you've done through Christ on the cross and continue to still to today. And so we ask this all in Jesus' name, amen. This morning we have the blessing of having Tim and Penny Iverson with us. Tim is going to come and join me. He's going to present some of what it looks like to be God's people and how God's at work around the world. I'm excited uh, to hear that from him and to see how we can partner with that work. Tim, would you come and join? Would you guys give him a hand as he comes? Uh, you do wonders for my megalomania. I'm uh, really glad we're here today. I appreciate your taste in missionaries. Um, a few years ago, I was driving in Florida with, uh, 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 around Florida, and the cops pulled me over for speeding. And I said, uh, officer, I've got to rush my mother to the hospital. She's overdosed on weight loss pills. And he says, I don't see anybody else in this car. And I said, no, I'm too late. <laughs> or... If we have time, I have more like that that I know you'll appreciate. So I want to rush through a few things today because I have so much I could share and a limited amount of time. First, I want to start out by saying two things. I have obligated this church to two things. Number one, I stopped uh, Kitty Corner over here and bought some milk this morning to have with, with uh, lunch today. And I was talking to the young lady at the counter. I said, have you ever been to that church over there? And she said, no, I've never been there. And I said, you ought to go. True story. I said, you ought to go. It's a good church. So obligation number one. You need to be friendly to any visitor that comes in your church because one of them might be her. And I've already told her this is a good church. Don't let me down, guys. Don't let me down. Obligation number two. Checked out of the hotel this morning. I said to the, to the clerk, I said, we'll see you again in four years. Obligation number two. You need to have us back in four years on our next home assignment. Are, are we all on board with this? Okay, thank you. Um, I want to thank you for having us here because it's just been a blast. Uh, we started out Wednesday night. And we had such a good time with the kids. They're great. I made new friends with Josie and Faith and Mariah and some others. And, um, and then we went on to the youth, and they were great. You have a good youth group here. I want to uh, give kudos to Josh and, and, and Lee and Peggy, the sponsors. And uh, they were just responsive and, and interactive and engaging. So not like some youth groups we've been in. Uh, so really great. Uh, of course, thank you, thank you, thank you for what you're doing for the Great Commission Fund. Uh, your faith promises, uh, your, uh, just your engagement with missions around the world. Uh, some in Taiwan, we're always welcoming you to come and visit us in Taiwan and take us to lunch, whatever that looks like, uh, but just your engagement with Chris and Jamie and their ministry up there uh, and, and other missionaries around the world. Thank you for doing that for the cause of Christ around the world. So we really appreciate this church. Great to be here today. Reconnect with some of you. Uh, make some new friends. Uh, last night, eat some really good food, pizza and roast and some other things like that. So a uh, really good time. Thank you very, very much. We have some prayer cards, new prayer cards. Not as good looking as our older prayer cards, but, you know, it is what it is. I'm a little grayer, but uh, if you want to grab a prayer card, uh, I think Penny has them. They're, they're out there, okay? And uh, if you want to get on our prayer letter list, Penny writes a prayer letter every month or six weeks or so. She does a great job, and I want to uh, just encourage you, if you don't get our prayer letter, see my wife Penny. Penny, stand up so they can all see you if they don't know you. Stand up. Turn around. There you go. That's Penny, yeah. Mm -hmm. Give her applause. She stuck with me for 38 years, and that it deserves a round of applause in and of itself. So see her, get on the prayer letter list. We only do it by email, uh, but we'd love to get you on there and you can keep up with what we're doing. Um, I want to explain my t-shirt very quickly. Uh, this is uh, a very, can you hear me if I'm away from the mic? Yeah, can you hear me? Okay. They can, but online can't. Okay. Then I will stay here. Uh, so we're online. Cool. 
All right, so I want to explain my t-shirt very quickly. Uh, we started a small church. I'm going to show you some pictures real uh, shortly. About uh, We started a small church, uh, started a new church, and it's very small. We don't have membership classes yet. We're too young. We're too small. So when somebody says, I want to be a part of your church, we give them a t-shirt. And uh, we had 20 of these printed up, and we've given them all out. And we had another 20 printed up, and we're in the process of giving more of those out. Uh, so in the front, it just um, we started out the Flow Center, and uh, it, so it says the Flow. We use the English, the Flow Center, and then that's sort of our umbrella. And then underneath that, we have some ministries going on. One of which is Yong Antang. That means Gushing Grace Church. So we have this on the front and with our, our, our flow uh, logo. And then on the back, it says, I Zai Jiu Funza. Jiu Funza is the area we live in in our town of Tainan, Taiwan. And uh, I is love. So I Zai Jiu Funza just means love in Jiu Funza, love in our community. That's what we want to be known for, the church that loves our community and uh, shares the love of Christ. So that's what this t-shirt is about. I really like this. A um, friend of mine designed it, laid it out, and uh, I'm really proud to wear it. Uh, before I go any further, I want to give a quick shout out to some very good friends of Penny and mine. And uh, they can't be with us today, but Graydon and Helen Peterson, they said they'd be listening. And I don't know if they're going to listen to this service or the next service, but we really appreciate them. Had a, a chance to visit uh, uh, Graydon and Helen yesterday at uh, uh, the the hospice care, and um, just really appreciate them. So I want to uh, thank them for just being good friends of ours these many years. Um, let's do a PowerPoint. And good. Um, so yet, yet, if uh, I'm not, I'm going to kind of blitz through this very quickly because of time considerations. Then I want to open up the word and share a little bit with you on that. Um, but uh, yet, there's a, there's a verse in Habakkuk chapter 3, it says, you know, all these troublesome things are happening. The fields aren't bearing crops, and the, the figs aren't, there's no figs on the vine, the grape, no grapes on the vine, all this kind of junk going on. Uh, yet, I will praise God my Savior. And that's kind of what we're uh, about in our church in Taiwan, and uh, especially Yong Antang, Gushing Grace Church. Um, so... We, uh, yeah, we start, you or me, am I screwing up here? Okay, so we moved into a community, this community. It's like nothing is there, but it's a fantastic opportunity. The government bought this land and they uh, filled in all the fish ponds that were there and, and then they sold it to developers and we are the first church in this new area called Joe Funza. And uh, uh, we're in on the ground floor, it's really exciting to see the possibilities in this. Uh, uh, there's a three mile perimeter. I don't know how many square miles that is, but um, uh, in that community, there's going to be about 30,000 people living there in a few years when all the building is done and people have moved in. And we're on the ground floor. You ought to be proud of your Alliance missionaries uh, for the foresight they had to go in there. And we were shown this uh, by some other missionaries said, hey, there'd be a great possibility for a church here. And then we moved in and some other missionaries joined us. Um, and in two years, uh, with a lot of help uh, from other missionaries and coworkers, we went from uh, three original people plus Penny and I to uh, 20 plus people. And that's really cool for Taiwan. Uh, so we're very grateful. Um, I had my plan for how last term was gonna look, but, and some other missionary coworkers had their plan, but none of that was paid attention to by God, uh, but God had his own plan for moving us out of where we were um, working with Amazing Grace Church. There were some issues there. Uh, we felt it best to leave, leave it in the hands of the national coworker that we had there, and we moved down to Tainan. We are the church that shouldn't have survived because when we moved to Tainan, Joe Funza, um, there was nothing there. We had no friends. We didn't know anybody, really. Uh, we didn't have any coworkers. We had no, no plan of how we're gonna make this happen. Um, None of this stuff. But what we did have is we had a garage. And so we, uh, we, we well, I'll show you in a second, but we start meeting in our garage just because, for those of you that visited us in rural Taiwan where we used to live, we park our car in our garage, same in tai, Tainan where we live now, and, uh, but that's where we were starting church services. Um, and we had a desire just to see it 
uh, happen and plant a new church, and God was just really in it, and we're so grateful to him. Our last term, uh, not the last, I trust, but the latest term was our seventh, and it was like in the words of Charles Dickens, the best of times, the worst of times, uh, in many ways. We had conflict. Um, we had uh, COVID's impact. We tried a small group and it failed miserably. We, we did a coffee talk and COVID hit and ruined that. And then when COVID got over and we tried to restart, it didn't work. Um, we, I had a surgery that went, a lot of junk. It was the worst term we've ever had in 32 years of ministry. Uh, but in many ways, it was the best term that we had. Um, yes, the best term. Because we got a, an Indonesian coworker sent by the Christian Missionary Alliance of Indonesia, Ligat, and she's an amazing young lady. Um, we have uh, Chan here on the, on the, on the left. Uh, she is the first Banar missionary. Now, Banar is a tribe in Vietnam from the Central Highlands of Vietnam. She's the first Banar missionary ever sent out, and we got her in Taiwan, and she's fantastic. Um, we started Gushing Grace Church with the three ladies shown here on the left simply because we met them in our community. They were Christians, hadn't been to church in a while, and we just said, you know, sometimes, um, or, or, I mean, you know, just come on over to our house and we'll figure it out. We tried a small group and, and that didn't work. So with them, we said, you know, let's just come on, you come on over to our house and we'll do some worship. I can play guitar and we will, uh, you know, share a little bit from the word. And that was the, the genesis of Gushing Grace Church. And those three ladies uh, have stuck with us through thick and thin and are amazing members of our church wearing, two of them wearing our t-shirts. Uh, we got Jason and Andy He, who are, are Taiwanese, who have lived in America for many years, and then sent back to Taiwan by the CMA in America, just like Penny and I are, and uh, they're missionaries, and they are working with us uh, in Tainan, and now when we're in home assignment, the church is in their hands, and they're doing great. Candace, another, well, both of these people are huge blessings. Um, Vincent and Candace, they are not a couple, they're uh, just in this picture, and uh, Candace especially has been a real blessing. We prayed her into the church, literally. I'm going to have some chances to share uh, in the next hour, if you're not in Sunday school or whatever, um, uh, and you want to hang out with us in the cafe, we're going to be drinking coffee and, and schmoozing, and I'd love to tell you Candace's story. Uh, she's a huge blessing, and Vincent too. Uh, we were supposed to get this young lady as a missionary, she is Hmong, and uh, just before she was appointed, she met a guy. Uh, she's fully appointed by the Alliance, ready to go. But then she met a guy. And you know that, right? Guys can really mess up ladies' lives. <laughs> but, but, the good news is, Nero, her fiance, is also now in the process of being approved as a missionary with the Alliance in America. And he also is Hmong. And so we're not going to get one. We're going to get two missionaries in a couple of years. So really good news. <coughs> We had a church leadership team. We said, you have to believe three things. I want to challenge your church to believe three things about each other. This is for Christians. This is for Christians. Number one, we're not perfect. I look out and I can tell this is very true in this church. And you look at me and you say, that's really true. We're not perfect. Can we just believe that about each other? We're not perfect. Number two, but we're trying to follow Christ. It doesn't always work. Because we're not perfect, we're going to sin, we're going to mess up, we're going to mista make mistakes. But, you know, we're trying. We're really trying. And number three, we mean well. We mean well. We have good intentions. If I say something or do th something stupid that hurts you, please believe about me. It was not intentional. Believe the best about me. And that's going to cover over a lot of sin. And if we believe that about each other, we can work things out. Um, I really don't get afraid of conflict because I can see the good that can come from conflict. And if we just believe these three essentials about each other, it will cover over a lot, a lot. And our church will be healthier. Okay, so now we're on home assignment. And one night on August 8th, um, a couple months ago, we're home late, getting ready for bed, pitch dark, had some lights on in the back of the house. All of a sudden, we heard the screeching of tires. We heard a crash. And a millisecond later, we heard another crash and felt this huge thump. And in the darkness, I went out to turn a light on. And I took one step into my kitchen, and I tripped and fell flat on my face. It's like, what's going on? There's nothing in my kitchen to make me fall. 
And then I got a light on, and this is what I tripped on. That's my kitchen in Rochester, Minnesota. A car hit that corner of our house, broke 11 of the studs, like matchsticks, um, put a hole in our house right below the window, and then skidded down the side of our house, um, knocked our stove and everything. You can see the sink is across the kitchen. Um, and then, so, uh, you know, took out some of the foundation. And then he ended up upside down in the neighbor's driveway. Street racing, alcohol was a factor. Um, nobody was hurt, really praise God. Uh, so that's what we're dealing with on home assignment. If anybody knows how to repair a house, please see me after the service. I can use all the help. We have a great contractor. Uh, I always say, if you don't have farmer's insurance, switch. Get farmers. They've been really good working with us on this one. So uh, that's what we're dealing with on home assignment. It's not our plan, but then what did I say before? God rarely listens to my plan. He's got his own plan. And through this, you know, I don't know why this happens, but I do know this. I've had many opportunities, plenty of the same, many opportunities to share Christ to share Christ in the midst of all of this. So, really cool. Um, now I want to talk about your shape. And uh, let me just pull out my notes here so I can focus a little bit. And uh, I could actually, I could leave it to you. I could share what I want to share a little bit. Or I could tell more jokes. What do you want? Okay, we'll go with the sharing. So, um, I want to just refresh your memory for a second in um, uh, Luke chapter 19. Well, let me go on here. Okay, so uh, if you want to give, uh, I just want to finish the PowerPoint real quick. Uh, if you want to give electronically through the Alliance instead of through the church, you go on the cmalliance.org website. Top of the page is a little word, give. Click on that, and then this page will come up, and you can kind of scroll down and type in, start typing in you know, a missionary you love that you want to support or some kind of ministry, and uh, you can do that. Okay, so there we are. Now, in Luke chapter 19, there was a guy, and he was going to go off and be made king. Like king, it's not like we know of today. It's more localized in those days. And so uh, he called his servants together, and he had 10 servants, and he gave each of, the, each of them one mina. That's a sum of money, okay? Each of them had one mina. And he gave them one piece of instruction. That's it. Put it to work. Put it to work. He didn't tell them how. He didn't say how to invest it, uh, how to bankroll it, uh, maybe purchase some things that are needed for our, this ranch or whatever we have. Um, uh, but he did have an expectation that they would put it to work. So he goes off. He gets anointed king. He comes back. He calls the servants. He says to the first one, I gave you a mina. What did you do with it? And the guy says, you gave me one mina. I have earned 10 more. Here you go. And what does he say? Well done. Good job. He calls the second servant. And he says, what did you do with my mina? And the second servant said, uh, you gave me one mina. I have earned five more. And the king says, well done. Good job. He calls the third servant. He said, what did you do with my mina? Now, a few years ago, I bought a bird in Taiwan, and I wanted to teach it how to talk. And so I did the research, and I heard that if you give it a little bit of whiskey, it kind of loosens its tongue, and it will learn how to talk. So I did that. And pretty soon, the police came to my door, and they arrested me. And I was arrested for contributing to the delinquency of a mina. So, the king says, I've got a whole bunch more. You want to? Okay, so the king says to the third servant, what did you do with my mina? And the, the, the servant says, sorry, I'm reaching for something, not scratching. All right, so, the servant says, you gave me one mina. And this is what he says, I was afraid. So I took your mina and I put it in this cloth and I socked it away. I just put it away. And what does the king say? Terrible servant. You could have at least put it in the bank and earned some interest instead of just 
putting it in a cloth somewhere or burying it in the ground. So I want to submit to you that that servant was guilty of contributing to the delinquency of a mina. <laughs> that he didn't do anything with it, but tucked it away someplace. So, um, why? Because as he says in Luke 19, verse 21, I was afraid. He was afraid he would lose it or he was afraid it wouldn't earn any money, or he was afraid he would go bankrupt. He was afraid of his boss. There was a fear of failure on the part of that servant. Guys, this is a huge issue in Taiwan, this fear of failure. We have a concept in Taiwan called diolian. Diolian means to lose face. This, to lose face. You don't want to lose face. You don't want to come off looking bad. So people will do many things to avoid losing face. Uh, they will tell lies. Oh, sure, I'll do that, knowing they, they can't or they won't, but they say they will. Um, they will, uh, like when we teach English in, in public schools, we will say, uh, 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 okay, repeat after me, this is a cat. And they'll say, this is a cat. And we'll say, okay, repeat after me, this is a cat. This is a cat. We'll say, uh, Henry, repeat after me. This is a cat. And the other students will say, he can't. Tabu Hui. Why? They label him because maybe he's a little slow academically. Maybe he's shy for whatever reason. But they've labeled this guy. And now he's afraid to try because he's already got the label on him. And we see this many times in Taiwan. People won't even try. Students won't try to practice their English because they're afraid of failure, which is diolian, losing face, looking bad. Um, pastors won't try creative ministries because they might not succeed. They might fail, and then they'll come off looking bad. So we have churches that are stuck. So I had one student named Cindy. Cindy was a great young lady. I knew her in uh, eighth grade. Uh, seventh grade, probably. And she would always come up after class and hang out with me and be a couple other students up there, and she'd practice her English. And guess what? Today, she has really good English. She's a university student. Uh, she has really good English because she was willing to try. And I want to challenge you guys, be willing to try. Be willing to try. Um, you know, Failure is just part of life. Like somebody said, some people succeed, some people learn. And we learn way more from failure than from success. We grow in our faith way more from failure than from success. We grow in our faith way more under trials than under an easy life, right? I think we'd all agree with that. So um, one time uh, when I was a kid, somehow I got in my head, I want to do this really cool thing called skydiving. And, uh, you know, nobody in my family skydived. Uh, so where did this come from? But I took a ground school, and then I was too young when I got done, and then we moved and never got. So fast forward about 40-some years, and I had a chance to go skydiving. So I, I was in Zephyr Hills, Florida, and I took the training in the morning, and then in the afternoon they take you up to 13,500 feet with a couple of guys with you, but it wasn't that tandem. You weren't linked together. Uh, but you jump together, and then once you pull your ripcord and the chute opens, uh, then they let go, and so you're on your own. There's a lot of things that can happen when you skydive. Uh, your chute could fail. Your chute could open, but, you know, have like a panel missing. Uh, your chute could open, but stream, you know, not fully deploy. A lot of things can happen, but I didn't let that fear of failure put me off from achieving my lifetime dream to skydive. So, God gave those... Um, uh, or, I mean, the, the, the king gave those servants five, uh, uh, well, sorry, the king gave those servants, those ten servants, a mina each. And he called, we only know about three of them. We don't know about the other seven, what happened there. But I want to share with you very quickly in closing, what has God given you? What has God given you? And I was reading uh, in Luke 11 where Jesus is really getting down on the Pharisees, and he says, didn't the the same one that made the outside of the cup, that looks really nice, make the inside also. God created you, not just the outside that we can all see, 
But he created your inside too. And he's given you five things I want to share very quickly. Number one, spiritual gifts. He's given you spiritual gifts. Um, every one of us has a spiritual gift. And I want to go back to what I read in, in Luke 19. The command that the king gave the servants is put it to work. So for these five things, God is saying to us, put it to work. You don't believe me? Go into Romans 12. Go into 1 Corinthians chapter 12. You'll see where he says, just do it. God is the Nike God. I, I know it's kind of weird, but he, he says, just do it. If you've got this gift, use it. If you've got that gift, use it. If you have this gift, you just do it. So, I, I, I love Nike shoes. Um, they're too rich for my blood, but, you know, I love my Nike shoes. I love that just do it. So, he's given us uh, spiritual gifts. And there are five things that you can do. I find this really fascinating. There's five things you can do for missions. You can give money. You can pray. You can encourage people to go. That's being a sender. You can encourage missionaries. That's really, really important. You don't hear much about that. But that's really important to us on the field. Encouragement, emails, cards, letters, whatever that looks like. Um, and then you can go yourself. Okay, so th these five things you can do, guess what? Two of those are found in the list of spiritual gifts. Giving and encouragement. So, whatever gift God has given you, use it. Use it and just do it. Go into those lists, figure out what you have, and then... Uh, just just use it. Now, do you not do it if you don't have that gift? Oh, I don't have the gift of giving, so I'm not going to give. No, we're all expected to do some things. I don't have the gift of encouragement, so I don't ever have to encourage anybody. No, we want to be an encouragement, okay? So um, anyway, let me go on to the second thing God has given you, a passion, a heart passion. Um, I just found out this morning, your pastor runs, uh, I think it's really weird and crazy, but ultra marathons, but more power to them, you know. I can run from here to the refrigerator and, you know, get a rip here, but that's about it. Uh, so uh, a passion, but he does it to raise money for an organization that does a number of things or good things around the world, like one of the things is uh, human trafficking and preventing human trafficking. That's awesome. Some people have a passion for something like alleviating suffering in the world or preventing human trafficking, things like that. So what's your passion? We had Candace, I showed you her picture, and she was into our church, in, in our church, and she had a passion for the environment. So one weekend, one Saturday morning, we did an environmental cleanup in our community. Uh, Andy, I showed you, uh, Andy and Jason, Andy has a passion for kids. So that was the perfect ministry in our community with all these young families was to do a kid's ministry. So she started a kid's English class. Uh, Penny and I had started it, and it was okay, but then she took over, and it really got going, and they could, you know, really connect with people better than we could because they're Taiwanese. And so, you know, use your passion, okay? Whatever your passion is, I can just about guarantee if it's a healthy passion, if your passion is for drinking whiskey, I eh, probably don't want to use that in the church. But if you have a healthy passion, there's a place for you in God's kingdom and a place for you to use your passion. In God's kingdom. Okay, number three, your ability. Fixing a car is not a spiritual gift, but it is an ability. Playing guitar, I love sitting under Nathan's worship. Oh, we're so blessed. A couple weeks ago at district conference, we got to do it. Penny and I got to be there and sit under his worship, uh, his music ministry, and this morning. Um, playing piano is not a spiritual gift, but it is an ability. Use your ability for the kingdom. Okay, whatever God. I was talking to a mechanic in White Bear Lake one time when we lived up there, and he was sharing with me how, I think he was doing it once a month, like on a Saturday morning, he would invite people, like maybe single moms or whoever, that they didn't have a lot of money, to bring their cars into him, and he would do simple repairs or change their oil for them. He took what God had given him, his ability, and put it to work for the kingdom. Okay, number, th number four, your personality. Maybe you're an extrovert. Maybe you're an introvert. Maybe you're riotously funny like me. Maybe not so much. You know, who knows? We all have different personalities. Your personality can connect with people that my personality never will connect with. So use your personality that God has given you for the kingdom. Number five, the uh, fifth thing he's given you is your experiences. How many of you know their name? Rick Warren, Saddleback Church. Yes. No, nobody. Wow. Okay, so great church. 20, okay, a few people. 20,000. What experience did God give Rick Warren fairly late in his ministry career? His son committed 
suicide. After struggling for years with mental health issues, Rick's testimony is that him and his wife Kay have a ministry to others going through the same thing that they never would have had. So they took this ugly, ugly experience that they had to go through and are using it for the kingdom to bring hope to others. That's what we're about, guys. Our, it's called our shape. Spiritual gift, heart, passion, ability, personality, experience. That's a Rick Warren thing. It's not a Tim Iverson thing. So uh, use your shape. Use your shape. I always say try and spend 80% of your time ministering for the kingdom within your shape. Otherwise, you're not going to be as effective and you're not going to be as joyful. If you're always working outside of your shape, I don't have the gift of teaching. If you ask me to teach Sunday school, I'll kill the Sunday school. I'll dread getting up on Sunday morning to go to church because I have to teach Sunday school because that's, uh, that's not my shape. So try and spend, I get it, we all have to do some things outside of our shape. You know, it's just kind of the nature of the beast sometimes. But if you spend, I say 80%, as more if possible, working for the kingdom inside your shape, the way God has shaped you, you're going to be more effective and way more joyful. So that's my challenge. Figure out your shape. If you don't know it, try and figure it out. And I close with this. I think every one of you wants to be used of God. I do. I believe that about you. You don't want to just dr drift through life doing, you know, much of nothing. I think you want to be used of God because you're a Christian. You know who your allegiance is to, and you want your life to count for something for the kingdom. I think you want a sense of satisfaction in your life. I think that you uh, want to know that your life has purpose. And number four, I think you're afraid of something. Like that servant, you're afraid of something. Me, I used to be scared of women until I realized they were more scared of me than I was of them. So I think we're all afraid of something. Failure, uselessness, aging, whatever that looks like. But God says, this is the way I've shaped you. This is what I've given you. Now, go put it to work. Let's pray. God, thanks so much that you've given us your word, and it's so reliable. I mean, it's just truth. It's truth. And you've shaped us like this, and you've created us, and you want to use each and every one of us in your kingdom. So, God, I commit these people to you. Thank you for what you've led us through these last three years, and uh, thank you for this church's engagement with you and with the cause of world evangelization. Now, Lord, dismiss them with your blessing. Challenge them day by day. To lean into you, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you guys very, very much for having us back. Some of you may excitedly stay in here or in other Sunday school classes. Some of you may end up in the cafe connecting with each other or asking Tim and Penny about more of those stories or for more of his awesome jokes. All of those are awesome things. Whatever it is that you end up doing uh, or uh, going to do today, we hope that it's a blessing to you and that you enjoy it. You are dismissed.